In this video we're going to look at the op-amp summing amplifier. We'll mention its uses, look at why it's important, see what the circuit is and look at the major design calculations. The op-amp, or to give it its full name, the operational amplifier, is a very convenient analog circuit block to use. It has a very high level of gain, it has a high input impedance and a low output impedance. As a result, op-amps can be used in a wide variety of analog circuits the different functions being defined by the feedback that's used. The op-amp summing amplifier that we're looking at here is based around the inverting amplifier configuration. It finds uses in many applications, everything from an addition unit in an analogue computer to audio mixers, or even just adding two audio or other analogue signals together in whatever circuit may require it. Before we look at the op-amp summing amplifier itself, Let's have a look at why it's needed. Why can't we just add signals together using a few resistors? Here we have a simple network. The double circles indicate a voltage source which has a zero source impedance. Then the amplifier or load impedance is designated here by R1. Looking at the circuit as the voltage source associated with R2 sees it, then we have the following equivalent circuit. It can be seen that R3 the resistance in series with the second voltage source now appears in parallel with R1. This will mean that the signal level is reduced compared to R3 not being there. If further inputs are added, then the additional resistors add in parallel with R1. This is not at all ideal because with more inputs being added, the less the signal that is seen from any individual source. The inverting amplifier is able to overcome this problem very neatly. Let's look at the basic inverting amplifier circuit again. And from this, it's obvious that the non-inverting input is at ground potential, simply because it's connected to ground. The next bit is a little bit more complicated. The gain of the op-amp chip itself is very high. 10,000 would be a very minimum figure, and in most cases it's much more than this. But let's use this figure for the moment. For any given output voltage, this means that the difference between the two inputs of the chip will be 1 upon 10,000 of the voltage at the output. This will be very small, typically very much less than a millivolt. As the non-inverting input is at ground potential, this means that the inverting input is virtually at ground potential as well. This means that we can add more input resistors to the inverting input, and they won't affect each other. Because the inverting input is at a virtual earth potential, this circuit is sometimes called a virtual earth mixer. Looking at the gain of the standard inverting op-amp circuit, we see that AV, the voltage gain, is equal to minus R2 upon R1. The minus sign's there because the output is the inverse of the input. So for any input to the summing amplifier, the gain is minus R2 upon the input resistor for that particular leg, Let's call it R1X. Let's take an example for input A. We can choose R2 to be 10k ohms, as this is a nice, convenient value. If we want the gain to be minus 10, then we can put the values into the gain formula. With a little manipulation, we can see that R1A is equal to minus 10k upon minus 10, and this comes out to be a kilo ohm. And of course, we're not limited to making the gain the same for each input. For a gain of, say, minus 5 on input B, we can use exactly the same logic, and we can see that R1B comes out to be 2 kilo ohms. We also need to think about the impedance of the different inputs. Returning to the basic inverting amplifier circuit, we remember that the junction of the inverting input, R2 and R1, is at a virtual earth potential. This means that R1 is effectively connected to ground. The resistance seen looking into the circuit, then, is that of R1. Using the same logic on the circuit with many inputs, we see that the input resistance of input A is R1A, for input B it's R1B, and so forth. This is worth remembering, because the input resistance of the circuit may be important in many instances. So there we have it. The summing amplifier is easy to design, it's easy to use, and it's another important tool in the toolbox of the analog design engineer. Thank you.